Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to What You Say Anime. I'm your host, Peter. On today's episode, we will be taking an overview of the fall season and give our thoughts on the first few episodes of a handful of shows. We will mostly be talking about new properties, but we will save time at the end for sequels. Joining me today after recovering from her near-death illness is my lovely seasonal review partner, Cosette. It's been a minute, so how the heck are you? I'm still coughing, but I'm recovering. I've been watching a lot of fall season now, so it's been a great season. There's a lot of great shows, and I'm really excited to talk about them. Yeah, uh, this is coming into it, I thought, like a pretty big season in terms of we have some big-name properties. Some of it's been delivering, some of it hasn't been delivering, and we're going to go over all of that today. It's very nice for you to join me. I appreciate the help since Miles is out of commission today. Uh, So just a few things of how we do this, our format. We will talk about the first few episodes of a show and give our thoughts like normal. So minor spoiler warnings ahead. You can use the timestamps down below to jump around. And we will also be giving like our rating on the show and like where we think it's going to be at the end. That way we can go back when we actually do our review and see if uh, our predictions were right. Uh, Sometimes it's fun to look at a show like Alia, where I said that the floor was a seven and I gave it a five. So it's fun to look back and see what we did, I guess, in a few weeks. But speaking of look back, the movie's streaming on Prime November 7th. Make sure you go see that and listen to our review of Look Back. So sick plug. There we go. Uh, By the time this comes out, Look Back will be a few days away. So oh, everyone gets to check out that movie. But without further ado, let's jump into our first show. Uh, It was super hyped. Everybody was hyping this up, uh, including myself. Um, I've read a good chunk of the manga, and that's Mushroom Pup. Just kidding. Uh, It's Don to Don, everyone's favorite new Shonen property. I saw the first three episodes in the theater, and I I really enjoyed it. I do really like Don to Don, but since this is Science Saru, it's such a prestige studio, I had really high hopes going into it. And for the first three episodes, I really liked what I saw, but I didn't love what I saw until episode four. I think episode four changed everything. The The crab running away scene with the music, that's where I thought Science Saru really upped their game. Like, this is the Science Saru of old, where they, they weren't just another pretty studio. They go out of their way and do things that are unique to anime. I mean, we just did Devil May Cry Baby, which is such a unique show in, t- in itself. I was looking for something along those lines, and that crab running scene with the music, the out the 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 house beat with the the classical the da 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 it was so good it made me raise my ranking on the show and definitely elevated me more than what i originally read in the manga where like i said before i like the manga i don't love it i'm loving don da don now because what's like your first thoughts on don da don i think a couple years ago i heard so many people talking about the manga and at the time i was like yeah sure i'll check it out but i just never did Mm -hmm. and then unfortunately toronto didn't have a showing of the premiere so i was kind of bummed out about that because i think the first few episodes in the theater would have been really cool to see um i think the visuals are fantastic and i've known that denadan has some really great art in the manga so i think science are kind of did it justice but yeah i would say the recent episode was fantastic and i think that's the episode where i actually noticed the ost it's a lot more groovy it's more house beats and I didn't expect a vibe like that for a show like this. You know, I thought it was going to be typical shonen vibes, you know. Um, but I really liked the house beats. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. And then I saw that the composer is also doing Orb this season. So I think he's been pretty busy. But yeah, I've been really loving the show. I think it's a really fun take on like supernatural anime with like ghosts, but also aliens. I got a lot of warnings thanks thanks to a lot of people about the premiere episode. So I was fully prepared for that. And it wasn't as, I mean, not that I'm. I'm saying it wasn't as bad because I thought it was going to be a lot worse. But I really appreciate the warnings from the fellow people in the community because there wasn't a warning in the first episodes. So I really, I was really happy because that stuff usually triggers me. So, but yeah, I really enjoyed the first few episodes. I really like the characters. Their dynamic is hilarious. But yeah, I, I've been really enjoying it. Yeah, I think, I mean, we only, we haven't even been introduced to like the full cast. I mean, we got hints of Gigi, who is the, the the next boy to join the team. And then I don't know how to pronounce the, the, the other girl name, uh, like Shiratori when she gets introduced. And then that that's when like the whole squad gets together. But like through four episodes, we really only had like three characters and they've been fantastic. Like they're having like the, them eating the crab at the end or the lobster or whatever they had and their interactions. It just seems like a really fun, like found family dynamic that's slowly building because I mean, we don't really see a lot of Otaran's family, like any mention of it at all. 
which I think is a little confusing because I think that's like that in the manga as well. But the heavily focus of the family with Momo, I, th- I think it'll be really fun once we do find out a little bit more about Otarun and sort of his situations. But yeah, this cast is just, it's so great. It's so fun. I- I'm just loving what Science Saru is doing now. It's adding like a whole other element. I mean, it's like why I like anime more than manga just in general. Like you can do stuff with the soundtrack to elevate these this chase scene. You can add quirky voice actors and really establish the dynamic that I'm looking for between like the two leads with Momo and Otarun because there's obviously something on going going on there and I find a better connection through voice acting than I do through normal tech. So everything about this I just think is the source material is getting elevated a little bit. Uh, I can't wait to see where this goes going forward. Right now, I have the show at a nine. I think that's going to be my floor. I think that there's a good chance that this ends up being a 10 when it's all said and done. Um, I don't know about necessarily like this core because it's because it's broken up into two separate cores and it's not continuous. So like I can see myself giving like this core. I'm leaning probably since I read the manga, I'm leaning more towards like this is like a nine. But then as we go forward, I can see my score getting raised. But I mean, this is my number two anime of the season so far. I'm thoroughly enjoying it. Um, it makes Thursdays that much better. We get Mushroom Pup and Don to Don on Thursdays, and it's just a it's a great combo that I need. Because where, where are you leaning right now on this show? Um, I think I'm leaning at a nine as well. Um, I think it depends on the characters, because I know there's a bunch still to be introduced. I mean, the grandma already brought it up <laughs> the few points she's pretty awesome um but i think i'll bring it at night i think it seems like it's going to be a very high produced very well done shonen i think it's a shonen anime yep. oh Sign- for sure yeah okay cool yeah so i think it's definitely going to hit around a nine obviously you know it could be an eight depending on how the story goes but i've heard from manga readers they love it and usually i trust fellow manga readers so it could be a 10 i don't know the found family aspect that stuff usually makes me love manga or an anime even mm-hmm. more so yeah, I would I would say for a nine right now. Yeah, for sure. I think there's there's an arc when Gigi gets introduced. That's like my favorite arc in the manga. And I think that yeah. there's some crazy ass panels and the things that they can do with the anime, I think could like literally raise it to a 10 based off like yeah. those scenes. So I'm really looking forward to seeing more. And yeah, I mean, I, I it deserves all the hype that it's getting. Like if people I, I think I said this before, like I said I would be a little confused if people put this as like their anime of the year. And now I don't like if someone said this is anime of the year, I totally get it. Like, I, I think it's, it's that good. I, I it's probably gonna be like my top, like 10. Uh, I don't think it's gonna be one for Well, one's already solidified, but like I, this, this show is great. I love Don to Don. Um, it's a great addition to the season. It's a great addition to like this new. We, we've had like, like my hero ending in Shonen Jump and stuff like that. And we're in like a manga phase where like people are discovering newer manga because jjk ended my hero ended especially the shonen fans that they're looking for new properties and don to don has been like a huge focal point in that conversation and it's great to see that it's getting the love and care that i wanted to by a studio that i adore so props to don to don so my i'm looking at a nine because that's looking at a nine possibility of going up and down maybe a point but i think it's solidified is probably going to be one of the best shows of the season moving on to my number one show of the season and I, I'm just, I'm flabbergasted by how good the show is. Orb on the movements of the earth. I just think the, the storytelling and the characters of this is just next level. It's so good. I'm hooked on, I'm hanging on by every word that they say. And it's, it's the different types of dialogue that each character brings to the table. Where in the first three episodes, we had Raffle, Raffle, <laughs> Raffle, Raffle, Raphael. It's not Raffle. I'm, just, I'm bad at words, but. His introduction, I thought, was incredible. This character who kind of sees through people and their facades that they're doing. And he's also living a facade, but he's doing it in order to just, like survive in society, getting ingrained in heliocentrism, and then sort of like his demise, I guess. And then you have someone like Nowak, who is this enforcer character, but at the same time has like, well, it's, we haven't seen it, but it's mentioned that he has like a family. Uh, he loves his daughter. He's just doing this to put food on the table. And now we started, started this second story with Oxy. Oxy? I don't know how to pronounce his name. I'm so bad with names. Can you help me out? I was Oxy. Oxy. Let's do it. Oxycodone, uh, maybe? Ox- yeah, this is where Oxycodo got its name from. Because <laughs> this dude's a drug. And it, like his fascination with the stars being 
a character who has been essentially from my perspective has been told to do he, he never had he's never done something like he wanted to do like it, it always seems like he's taking orders from somebody and this is the first time in his life where something has caught him the fascination has caught him so much that he is now willing to like throw his life away for this and i just think it's the dynamic between like the the, the church and sort of like controlling the people with the information that they decide it kind of this is like a minor spoiler but it kind of reminds me of something like witch hat i mean i know that this is real but like because it's happened in real life but like I, I like the idea of like the central government sort of controlling the information and people kind of finding out and you mentioned it earlier it's the same composer uh that's doing don to don i think this ost is a incredible it is so good jay called it from the beginning he's like this ost is gonna go crazy i'm like oh wait and see and it's going crazy it's so good i don't know if it's the best of the season but it's it's fantastic uh kozak what are your thoughts on orb on the movement of the earth sure if i was gonna enjoy it it wasn't really on my radar till everybody in the discord was like hyping it up and like or 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 i was like oh yeah join the discord sick plug kozak about seasonals but i think the first two episodes and i'm really glad it had a two episode premiere because it really like sunk in what this show is about it totally caught me off guard about the main character dying by the third episode i sort of thought that maybe they should have premiered with three episodes i, I agree think that would be super impactful like pull an oshinoko yep. like that would have been really really cool i do really enjoy the story it's one of those animes where like i have to like really 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 pay attention yes and like yep. I have to like rewind it to reread it because I don't read it. Yeah, I can't watch anime in two times speed like some people. So oh, Pat. <clears throat> sorry, <Pat. laughs> but it's been really enjoyable. I've really liked it. I mentioned this in Discord, but Noak reminds me of the villain in Inglorious Bastards. He's just like very clever, very devious, very terrifying, and he like he had this like torture device that looks so terrifying. I think it was like in the second episode or something with yeah. the kid. And I was like, my jaw like dropped. I was like, Son oh, this guy. is that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> True. But I was just so like terrified. But I was like, oh, this is that kind of show. So I can see why people were kind of saying, oh, it could be like Vinland Saga. Because it's kind of like that whole like European S kind of show. Um, I really like the storyline of like passing the torch and passing knowledge. Because obviously studying like how the world earth is moving like that's not something that they could have studied in a day they were observing the sky and everything and that took years and so i really like the story about like passing knowledge towards many people unfortunately people died but i really i really like that and i'm really interested to see where the show is going to go yeah it has a great it reminds me a lot of like season two of vinland saga where i i think the switch from season one to season two of vinland saga threw people off but they fell back hopefully people fell back in love with like the character stories within this world that sort of drive plot points when there isn't war going on or something along those lines. And like, that's why I love Vinland Saga season two. This is like setting up for something that is going to be like huge. Like right now we're in this beginning stage of like more and more people are getting this idea that, you know, maybe earth isn't the center of the universe. And I kind of like the logic that they're using. Like, like we already have all this information that we've known from like, living and going to school and stuff like that and like we we know based off satellite images and physics and all this stuff that like we're not the center but like their logic explains like why they think earth is i think is really fun it's like you know it's gravity and like the stars are moving with us and if we were the center like why wouldn't we be the center of the universe god created earth and so i i like the, this conversation that they're having with each other to sort of justify their reasonings because i think it's not like illogical like i think in that time setting i think that would be like a very logical thing to think about and then as we you know get more observations and more information and better technology our ideas of what we thought were before are no longer as is so it's just i i, I can't wait to just like see how like the next episode progresses and like are they are they i i guess i want to see like because like Noak sort of has this idea in his head that like he's you know he's like he's killing all these people who are essentially against the church i'm gonna put that in quotations but like he's like picking up the material and reading it too he's just like oh this is kind of interesting like 
this isn't just like scribbles on a page. This is like research done by a professor. And he's like, Hmm. So I feel like I'm, what I'm looking for in this is sort of seeing how he changes with the information that's given to him. Cause they present him as like a pretty smart character. I feel like, so I, I can't wait. Um, I am loving this show. I think it's some, I mean, honestly, it's like the best character writing since Finland saga season two for me. It, it reminds me so much about it. Not just like, because it's in Europe and stuff like that, but sort of like the logic behind everything that they do in the series to me makes sense. And that's that kind of made sense for me in season two of Vinland saga. Right now I have the show at a nine. I think the floor or I think the floor is there's like, I had issue with the latest episode. So I do think my floor is an eight, but I think it's more likely that I give this show a 10 than an eight when it's all said and done. So this is two consecutive cores. So I won't know this. I guess I will find out in what, like six months what I give this, but I I'm loving it. It it won't be, I uh, trying to think next year it has some really good shows too, but like, if this is in like my top five next year for like aim of the year, I wouldn't be surprised. What are you feeling for orb? Uh, I don't think it's going to go any lower than a, than an eight. Like I think late eight's like the floor right now. I think there's a lot of potential. Obviously if like animation goes to shit yep. there, it could go to 7.5. I don't know. Animation doesn't really <laughs> animation doesn't really bother me these days lately so um the story has a lot of potential i'm really enjoying it um will it keep me interested for two cores is kind of like the main stick right now but like jay shout out to jay has been praising the manga so i think there's a lot of potential there so i think i'm definitely gonna go like high nine possibly ten really depends on how it finishes but like low eight i predict that noak is gonna be a good guy somehow he's gonna turn the tables yep. and like Last episode, like in Vinland Saga, so that's my prediction. <laughs> I, I see. I, I can see it going a few different ways because I can see him like staying the person he is in order to protect like his family, because mm. like he doesn't want like the church to, like kill his family or something along those lines. But then I can also see him being like this secret ally to I don't even know what the anti-church group would be called, but I'm sure they'll form some group and be an anti-church group and i could see him being like this double agent character i can't wait it, 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 it's something like that that intrigues me in the story and it, it's got me going so yeah big shouts to orb moving on me and Cosette are huge romance fans so this is gonna be our big old romance block so if you don't like romance you might want to skip ahead a little bit but we're gonna start with the big property blue box manga that we have both read are you still reading it no, I read like 15 chat, like barely. I think okay. I read maybe a few episodes worth. So gotcha. Uh, I, think I dropped it though. That's the thing. I think I just, it just went on by and I was like, I just kept falling behind. There's so. just so much good romance manga out there where I don't know. I don't think blue box is anything great, but the anime, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull it back in just a little bit. I think the anime has been a huge improvement on the manga. I think the animations are gorgeous. It has one of my favorite OPs and EDs of the year. The characters are a lot of fun. Uh, the like the the badminton animations were. I mentioned this in like our for our preview episode where in the manga they don't animate. They animate the badminton scenes pretty well, but they don't animate the basketball scenes well. And so far through the the anime, that's kind of the same. So I'm looking forward to see when they actually animate like a real basketball game. How they do that. I hope it's not like the blue lock slideshow that they're doing right now in the blue lock season with Chiatsu because I think that'd be a huge bummer because Taki had like a nice badminton match. I think it was the last episode that I really enjoyed. I was like, perfect. This is what I'm looking for in blue box. And I I've been enjoying it. I think it's been a very solid adaptation. I think it's, I actually think it's significantly better than the manga. So that's one reason why I'm like going to, I, I was still going to watch it like regardless but it's definitely on a higher priority watch list now because I think how good the studio is doing it. And I'm just thoroughly enjoying so many different elements of the story. Uh, Cosette, your thoughts on blue box. Cute. No, it, it's fine. It's it, I think for like a romance, it's fine. I think it's a really nice mix of like slice of life sports and romance. Cause it's not, heavily on the romance there's a lot more sports there's a lot more motivation there's a lot more like school slice of life so i've really been enjoying that kind of combo 
I really like that she plays basketball. I think that's really cool. There has I don't remember. I don't think there's any female basketball anime, at least that I can. I think there's like a shoujo one from like the seventies or eighties, but it's it's really limited. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's really nice. That's it's cool that she's like the champ of the team, and I really enjoy it. I really like their dynamic. I mean, I remember when I read the manga and the twist about her living with him. I was like, ooh, that's interesting. But apparently, it wasn't interesting enough for me to keep reading it. I think it's because I was reading other stuff at the time that was more interesting to me. You mentioned the OP. I instantly fell in love. As soon as I, I turned the episode on and I saw the the OP, I was like, oh my god, this is stunning. Yep. It's beautiful. The song is amazing. I mean, the band also did Tokyo Revengers, so that's like one of my favorite OPs. Yeah, Crybaby. Yep. I listened to that so many times for some reason. It's great. Um, it's so good. Um, I really love the OP. I think the Taiki and Chiatsu are such a great duo obviously like it's very very early high school romance it's not like they're gonna go straight into it i think it's typical high school stuff where they're all doing their own thing and they're flirting here and there and they're passing like little i don't know personality stuff towards each other but i really I like it it's fine i don't expect them to get married by the end of the season obviously but i think it's a nice dynamic and i know there's more people to get introduced the sports are really cool to watch anime there's another sport that's going to get animated soon that will look really cool but yeah i just like this story and i really like the fact that she's older than him yes that was one thing i was on mention too yeah like we i don't think there there's that many romance anime or manga where like the girl's actually the older one so i really like that it's a nice change of pace for romance so yeah like sort of like the looking up to your senpai romantic trope that they have a lot of times is it's always like the the freshman girl and the junior boy or whatever like that and it's like he's the president of the whatever club and i he asked me to join it's i mean it's like it's kind of like pseudo harem from last season or whatever like that but like having it flipped while simple is nice to see every now and then so i i do thoroughly enjoy that he like he calls her senpai and stuff like that my issues with Blue Box are, comes later. I actually think the beginning of Blue Box is like very solid, so I'm thoroughly enjoying this ride. Um, right now, I have it at an eight. I I really don't think it's going to change. I think it's going to be an eight throughout the mm-hmm. entire. Just because I've read 106 chapters, I know what's coming. I know what to expect. Uh, the animation's beautiful. I really like the voice actors. Um, I forgot uh, his buddy, EU, who is like the the nerdy glasses kid who also plays badminton, has been like his friend in like five other anime. I thought that was like really fun to like see that they've been a lot of these people have been paired together as a friend group in other anime. So that was like really interesting to see. And it's like, oh, that's fun that you can play off those dynamics together. So I, I think when it's all said and done, I'm going to give this an eight. And right now I think it's like a very solid eight be generous with this one because it's really cute but i also haven't read the manga so i don't know where it's gonna go mm-hmm. besides i know that i'm gonna get married so i think i'm gonna go like eight could be a 10 like honestly wow. i can see it. i could be i could i could see it happening because so you know what usually with romance anime i don't expect them to fully flesh out their partnership that quickly yep. so sure. i don't know i give tens to like everything so <laughs> yo same yeah so um but honestly like i i see it going like eight eight point five but there is potential that i might just give it a 10 right on okay i'd love i'd love to see if this is like you watch the whole thing and we do the review and you're like i hated this show like this show suck why did i think i was gonna give it a 10 miles is gonna be like i'm gonna give it a five yeah (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) no it's fun though yeah i'm really intrigued to see how you perceive the later episodes that that adds a whole nother element to it Moving on to our next one is probably my favorite. It's like, in terms of like comedy and romance, it's probably easily my favorite this season. How I intended an all guys mixer. I just love this. This dynamic is great. It is so fun having essentially, I'm so in a nice term, kind of like these three dorky dudes sort of being swooned by like three different types of girls that all have like their, the dynamic that they all work at like a uh, cafe where they cross dress. And uh, it's, I saw some like funny, funny tweets. It's like, are all these guys just like bi? Like, are they, are they just all kind of just confused in their sexuality that they find these girls who are cross dressing as men like hot. And it's just like, maybe they need to check on that. But I, I think this has been great. Like, sort of like Sue being like the alpha in control of everything. And her prince dynamic has been great. Fuji 
the the doujinshi, but her character it, it kind of like a, has a mix of being like introverted and dominant, which I think is super fun. Like the scene where they're at the cafe or whatever, and he like she, she like holds Asagi down. He's like, oh, she's like, oh, this would be great in my manga. It's like <laughs> she's getting all these reference tools from like kind of I'd say like playfully teasing uh Asagi, who is my absolute boy. And then Kohaku is like the what is she? She she looks like she's like the the delinquent character a little bit, but she's actually sort of like a sweetheart and kind of has that like they they misunderstand her based off her appearance, but she's actually like the sweet bubbly girl once you get to know her. And then the guy, I think the guys are just like okay outside of Asagi. They're a little tropey and whatever, but I think once you get everybody like mixing together, it's been an absolute blast. The zoo episode, the zoo date was great, and I just can't wait to see more what are your thoughts on how i attended an all guy mixer like i i originally didn't have it on my watch list because it's the only show that's on high dive that i'm willing to watch and so i was actually going to unsubscribe from high dive for a few months but thanks to discord i (laughs) decided to keep my subscription so i honestly it's so worth it it's an adult rom-com like duh of course i'm gonna watch it yep. i really like that it re- kind of has like this mask femme kind of representation so i wouldn't say they were bi but they just like a mask no, i think the, yeah of- i don't think the girls are bi i think the dudes are bi <laughs> no. oh, i don't think the guys are bi i think they just like a woman a little mask sometimes but i think it's like it's nice to see the women kind of rizzing the men up and kind of like being the more dominant being the yeah. flirty uh, we don't see that very often so i really like that dynamic with all of them i think they're just so much so is my soup so, so is my favorite because she just reminds me so much of hanako and wotakoi like and i love hanako so much um oh, i love their dynamics. oh no <laughs> he hates her not, uh, not oh, Sue, no. uh, the girl from uh hanako. wotakoi yeah whatever miles dismiss L. him you're not even here miles, hold the so. l miles <laughs> but it's just so cute and i really like the story of like how they literally all met kind of like as a blind date like mm-hmm. i don't think they knew each other beforehand yeah sue know, like, knows the main dude and like that's it from school yeah. i guess yeah so it's nice to see like these relationships grow where it's very dynamic like organic where it's like they all met and i love that these like there's like these three different stories you know three different love stories going on and i i really enjoyed it it's been such a fun time and thanks to all of you for hyping it up because i almost missed it mm-hmm um but i really like their dynamic obviously so and tokiwa are my favorite they're just so much fun but i'm really excited for the next episode when they're at a convention because obviously she'll be selling her dojensi probably mm-hmm. with her special manga yeah. um so i think that's gonna be a lot of fun to watch yeah I, I so like asagi is like by far my favorite character i love like the dumb golden retriever trope it's like kind of it's like where shima was dumb but like I, I it's like how aloof he is and then fuji is like the polar opposite where she's like very she looks very serious and but like at the same time she's like all right i'm taking control or whatever like when she played the prank and like opened the door and like grabbed him like i love stuff like that it's so fun he's just like what is happening <laughs> but like at the same time he reminds me of a dog he's like this is so much fun <laughs> like yeah, what- he's, a, he's a golden retriever for yeah, sure like yeah. he's just- so cute so cute yeah this show has been every episode i will i blink and the episode's over like i have so much fun watching it uh if you don't have a high dive account i don't know if it's worth paying six bucks a month but this is my number three show of the season i think it I, like i already decided i'm reading the manga uh when this when this anime is done like i i can't wait to see where they take the relationships because i don't mind in stories where there's like especially romance stories where there's like roadblocks in the relationship and sometimes it can be forced and sometimes i think it can be natural and fun i think that they can this is the type of show where like if it's more focused on them just being like goofy and having fun with each other i don't think i need to see them in like a solidified relationship where like in other shows i that's definitely what i'm gravitating towards where this is like i'm having way more fun with just the group dynamic and the things that they do rather than the development of their actual relationship. They could just be friends and I'll be that's a hundred percent cool with me. But um mm-hmm. I have the show at a nine. I legit think this could be a ten. I think yeah. this is literally one of the funnest anime I've watched all year. Uh it's been an absolute blast, and I can't wait to like watch every episode when it airs. Where what's your uh where are you leaning right now on the show? 
It's definitely not lower than an eight. I, I'm going to say this a lot. It's not going to be lower than an eight. Will it be a 10? That's uh. I think potential. I might be a little preposterous with that, but. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah. I, I thought I was going to read the manga after three episodes. Mm. I, st- I still feel that way. Every episode has been getting better and better. I'm like, I can't see myself not loving this show. Yeah. I mean, when you think about it, like what could go wrong? And I don't know. Like, I just, it's such a nice story dynamic. And like, yes, I can just, every single episode should, could just be them going on dates. And there's no relationship at the end. And you know what? That's cool because we get to see these dates. And that's what I want to see in anime lately is just dates. Like, show me <laughs> a progression of how people get to know each other. So, exactly. I mean, the lowest will go with an eight, maybe a 10, but I feel like that's really stretching it. So I'll, I'll be like eight, 9.5. Cool. I, I, I'll, I'll take that for sure. I, I love that <laughs> answer. Moving on to something that's a little bit more messy, though, is Yakuza Fiance. I haven't watched the fourth episode. It aired before we started recording this, but I thought that this was a show that I would not like because I read Yakuza Lover, which is way more graphic. And I thought it was going to have something like a similar dynamic. And this is, it's like messy and like the right amount of messy. Like it's not. In, I'm going to give spoilers for anyone who is playing on re- reading Yakuza Lover, where <laughs> it's they have like the thing where it's like conflict. Once the conflict is over, they have sex. Once they're done having sex, there's a new conflict. And then after they do that, then they have sex. This, I don't know where it's going because it's like the dynamic of them like going to school and which is that's another thing. They look like they're grown ass people, but like whatever. I, 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 after the first episode, I did not care. But you have, like, their dynamic of, like, they still have their school life, their family life. They had, I think it was in episode three, they explained the family structure a little bit. Sort of, like, where Kirishima's family stands and where Yoshino's family stands. And sort of, like, this hierarchy. And you can already kind of foresee where the conflict is going. And, like, I I like that a lot. I, I think it'd be really interesting. We already saw some, like, badass moments with... Yoshino like breaking into like the club to find that like one girl and then she gets like which I, I'm a little surprised like she gets straight up like punched in the face I was like <laughs> oh normally uh, normally like anime when like a girl gets hit it's like she gets slapped or maybe she gets like pushed to the ground and like she got like clocked and then <laughs> Krishna was like I'm gonna kill all of you it's just like oh yeah this is this is this is great thoroughly thoroughly enjoying yakuza fiance cosette what are your thoughts on this show well just funny because at the beginning of the year when sign of affection came out everyone was like oh she red flag red flag and yep. then they said hananoi red flag everyone was a red flag and i'm like you are not prepared for the red flag that's coming in the fall season and that is Kir- kirishima i've read the manga i've only read a few volumes only because kirishima is a bit of a jerk and i don't really enjoy reading romance with a jerk so i kind of stopped reading it mm-hmm. um but no, that's like i'd rather watch it at this point i'm so happy to see it animated and like a lot of people were saying that the art style is kind of like weird in the anime but the manga actually looks very similar there are some scenes where like their faces are a little awkward looking but honestly it's so much fun to watch the op grew on me the ed i really love yes i really love the ed it's such a banger um, but I'm so happy to see Yoshino animated because I think she's the whole reason why I started reading the manga because I think mm-hmm. she's such a badass. And seeing someone, seeing her beat someone up with the blow dryer, like, iconic. So good. <laughs> so good. But yes, Kirishima is like the biggest red flag. He is a huge jerk. He's a masochist. But this is going to get toxic and messy. And there's going to be more people being Love introduced. It. Obviously, we just got introduced to like her adopted... I forget if he's her brother or cousin, but adopted someone in their family. Um, there's a lot more men to come in, um, a lot more gang people to come in. So it's going to get messy, but it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. So I'm really excited to watch it and see where it's going to go. And I'm really excited to watch everybody jump on this because I wasn't sure how popular it was going to be. I actually just opened the Kodansha app the other day. It's like the number one manga right oh, now. Yeah. on the app. So A lot of people are reading the manga right now. So um, yeah, I'm excited to see where it's going to go. And for the audio listeners, that's our Discord mascot, Marty, because that's puppy. But so I, I agree with you in terms of like red flag MCs 
with something like Karishima. I think the only difference is it's like when you have shows something along the lines of have you ever seen Blue Spring Ride? Is that the surfing one? No. no. Okay. So I'm like there there's other shows where I think like the MC is like the red flag. I definitely prefer my Kazai Hayas. I definitely prefer my Itomis. Like I prefer my green green flag kings. But when a lot of times it, when it's a red flag male MC, the girl can be a little bit more like taking his shit. And like what I like about Yoshino and why I don't care Karishima as a red flag is like she doesn't take any of his shit. And I love that. Like I think she's such a badass. Like she's my favorite female lead of this season by like a good chunk i think like as much as i love momo from don to don yoshino brings like <laughs> she brings the pain like she brings the attitude that i'm looking for we're like you are not allowed to treat me the way i don't want to be treated and like no if ands or buts and like yeah you might be a stone cold killer with a knife but i'm still gonna come at you like she does not care and i i i love this dynamic like it is it is so bad for both of them. It is toxic as shit. I don't care. It is so entertaining. I love these like Yakuza style shows where they're, I, I don't even know if they're trying to figure each other out. Like they're kind of just like forced to, in a sense where like they yeah. live together. So they are sort of figuring each other out. But like right now in the story, like Yoshino hates Kirishima. Like she <laughs> despises him. And then Kirishima is like the exact opposite like he is head over heels for this woman like he he will jump in front of a train if she asked her and you know what he's like you said before he's a masochist he probably likes that shit so i don't know this show is like perfect level of toxicity it's 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 anime enough where like you have this story where is it could it be real maybe not really but like it's enough where it's like it gets me ingrained in it right now. I have this show at like an eight. I think it's ceiling is a nine, but as long as it's like super toxic and fun, I think I'm going to be hovering in that eight, nine range the majority of the season. And I, I love it. I fucking love this show. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if she's gonna sell more kidneys because I think. Oh, that's but... right. That was oh my god. The fact that like she said that she like sold her kidney and had all this money. Yeah. I'm like, oh, that's a funny joke. No, she did that. Yeah. <laughs> like she sold her kidney. Yeah, when I read that in the manga, I was like, oh my god, this is legit. Yeah, there's like this is as popular right now. So yeah, I'm loving it. Yoshino's a badass. Um, she's one of my favorite females this season. Uh, but yeah, I think nine probably. But yeah, definitely an eight for sure. I oh, think yeah. it's an eight nine. Um, yeah, I don't see it. I could. Would it be a ten? I don't know. I don't think it would go that high for me personally. But eight nine for sure. Yeah, I don't think. I mean, honestly, if I have like the most fun ever watching it, it might be a ten just based off pure entertainment. But I think it, it's going to be pigeonholed by kind of like the content that it, it's presenting because like it's not going to present something to me and be like, holy shit, this is a ten. I never saw that coming. Like if she becomes this like organ stealing yakuza member or whatever, then the show's a ten. But but like it's not have to do something crazy, but it's so much fun. I can't wait for more episodes. Continuing on our romance journey, we have I believe like the only Jose of the season. There's two. What's the other one? The other one is with those gods. Look, it's it's like a rated like five right now in Mal. It's the one with like the guy. There's like a guy with black hair. And there's Hi, a bunch of other dudes. Hi, Gakura. Yeah, it doesn't look like. A- <laughs> I've never even heard of it. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> oh, apparently there's also a hentai. That's a Jose that's airing. So shut up. What? Yeah, Taisho yeah. Marriage Blanc. Uh, according to Mal, is a <laughs> a historical hentai. So. All the oh. all the Jose lovers out there, go check that out and let me know how it is. But Nina the Starry Bride, this show has I've been seeing a lot of like back and forth whether people agreeing with the quality of the show or not. Where they're like the animation's a little rough, the story's a little wonky, and I agree. I think the animation's fine so far. I do think the pacing is a little weird. Sort of like how I like. There's two sides to this, so. Uh, more this is more than just a minor spoiler with this but like nina and azur sort of i'm not gonna say like became a couple but they are very like intimate and close with each other after like episode four and 
them him sort of like opening up to her with being also like a fake prince i think is a really good way to make the progression go faster because it's something that the, it's something that only two people can relate to these two people and i think that's like a really good way to establish a connection with somebody with with that but i think like how fast their romance kind of got with each other was done a little fast that's like my only co- complaints in terms of pacing but i really enjoyed episode four i thought that like bumped it up a little bit for me other than that i thought it was like okay and speaking of red flags set looks like the worst person ever did you watch episode four no i didn't watch any today anime okay i'm not gonna spoil anything for you then but uh set looks like the worst person in the entire world so I can't wait for you to see if you change your mind on who's the biggest red flag of the season, because I think set is going to be the front runner, which has me thoroughly intrigued into seeing how he becomes like the second love interest when Nina and Azur sort of hit it off. So well. what are your thoughts so far on Nina, the starry bride? So I follow a lot of shoujo content creators on Twitter and everyone was like praising Nina. So I was like, okay, like definitely going to watch it. Cool. I do agree with the pacing. It did feel a bit weird because episode one, he like kidnaps her and then he like saves her. And then all of a sudden she's in love and she has a crush on him. And that, that pacing feels weird to me, but as a woman, I don't fall for someone that quickly. Well, she's like uh, super hot. Like crazy. Yeah, like she was, <laughs> and then like, I guess it's hard for, for me to tell how much time has passed as well. Like I'm yep, trying to look at sure. her hair with growth. I'm not totally on board with this yet, but I know that a lot of people have said, you got to go through a few episodes, meet set. Everyone says you have to meet him. Yep. So, and I'm very curious on who this guy is. Um, but personally, I, it feels like Stockholm syndrome with the two of them. The kiss, I didn't, I didn't get butterflies because I was like, "This is weird." Because he, not to say that he groomed her, but he k- took her away. Yep. And then he, he's the only one that knows her true self, and he kind of like captured her. And then he's always with her. He's always guarding her, and like she automatically falls in love. And that's that reminds me of Stockholm syndrome. A but bit. now that. I now that I know she has another love interest, it's going to get interesting. So I'm excited to watch tonight's episode. I'm probably going to watch it right after we finish this episode. But yeah, I'm not totally on board yet. But I think the main reason why I'm not on board is because I don't connect with Nina that much. And that's that's one major thing mm-hmm. for me. But I think it's because she's young. I felt the same way with Sacrificial Princess. She was just so young that's looking. Girl, Sarfi. Yeah, I, know, I know, but she's that's just, when girl. they're so young looking and young ask i'm like i don't know if i can connect with this girl but we'll see so i didn't hate sacrificial pencil i think i gave it like an eight or something but right now i'm not connecting with nina mm. so which is like usually a main factor for me oh for Characters sure are pretty, yeah so but i'm excited to meet set if he's like changes it up for me which i which is what i've heard i will keep watching right on so, um yeah i'm watching this dubbed and while i do think the dub is actually in some parts it's it's terrible absolutely <laughs> terrible jill harris who does the va for nina i think is killing it i love her as a va i think she's so good and she's like a pretty like established english va she did she's noel and black clover she's fern and uh freerin she's suleta and witch from mercury so like she's she's on some pretty prolific characters and i think she is i think she's killing it but i I agree. I don't think it's the level of Stockholm syndrome uh, because I do think it's like a pacing issue. If we saw more of their interactions, I think it would feel a little bit more natural, but it does feel a little, it's like, it's weird because I do think it's, it is unnatural, but like sort of them coming together over the same thing that they're going through is a great way to connect somebody. So I have the show at like a seven. I think it's like a low seven uh the floor i think this is i can't see this being bad i can see myself maybe getting bored but i don't think it's necessarily bad so i think the floor is probably going to be like a five or a six and i think the ceiling for this is probably seven eight range but i don't i can't see my i don't know if i could see myself getting higher than that but i'd love to be proven wrong so how, how about you cosette yeah, the way I feel right now, like it's usually by this point in seasonals, I'm like, which ones do I think are, are going to get the chop within, mm-hmm. you know, four or five episodes? It's not there yet. So I think the lowest it'll ever go for me in my head is probably a six. But 
I can see it going to a 7.5. I just don't know about the eight part. Sure. But I don't mind the animation. I think the look and the look of it's fine. Like, I don't I don't see the complaints people have yeah. about it. I yeah, me neither. More just the story that I need to latch myself onto. So hopefully sets the savior and is the reason why I continue. So, yeah, yeah. It, was just, it was kind of the same when people were hating on a condition called loves like animation and i watched them like this is just like fine like like sure are there production issues sure like a, a gazillion anime have production issues i'm watching this i'm like i think this looks really good <laughs> i just say really good but i think it looks fine her eyes look nice yeah like, her eyes look beautiful <laughs> and the kiss was great yeah like it's fine. it's fine yeah it, it, it's like yeah there's no like giant sakuga moments but like i don't know it's it's not like I said before. It's not a blue lock slideshow. So like as long as it's not that, it's fine. So okay, that's Nia and the Starry Bride. Moving on to our last romance of the season that we're talking about is three hundred and sixty five days to the wedding. I'm really really liking this show. Uh, I think their dynamic. I, I, well, let me say one thing. I think Rika, her dynamic is carrying the show for me. The Austin Powers, Pete looking ass look alike uh is like he's like fine i think he's like playing his role but i think it's gonna take quite a bit for him to like break out of his shell rika we are got like this great background with like why she's in the travel agency why she's upset i didn't say obsessed but like she loves like geography and maps and as somebody who minored in geography i love maps so like i i resonate with her so much i think because me when i love my maps i want to get into geography and be a teacher and I do like her approach of like sort of being like this travel agent type of person, and be like, oh, I know all of these like surrounding areas and the elevations and like that. Like that, that's fun. That's really cool. Complaints though with this show, pretty minor. Like the Claudia episode with like this princess. I didn't get it. I think it's cool. Like the, I think like the, I think it's cool. Like the representation that she had, but like, why is the princess of a country hanging out with this random travel agent type of dude? Okay, yeah, yeah. That was like a little whatever, but like her, Claudia's like backstory and like who she loves and why she's doing the things that she do. Like that was great. It's just like the story itself. It's like what if I hug out with like who's a <laughs> prince? Who's a princess? I don't know. It'd be it'd be odd because he's just like a dude at the travel. He's not even like the owner. He's just the dude. So outside of that, it's it's been really fun. Like it now we're at the point where like he's visiting their parents we met like his grandma that was a lot of fun she's great uh, she's like a little ball of fire the grandpa being hurt back is just like watching tv that was fun um but yeah rika is the driving force to why i'm thoroughly enjoying the show the most goes that what are your thoughts so far on 365 days to the wedding I think it's such a sweet premise for a romance i mean obviously it's kind of weird to like think oh i should get married to someone so i don't get move to alaska for my job because yeah. like That's if that happened to me that. they changed that in the anime because it was originally siberia in oh. the manga and then the anime it's alaska I'm like that's not so bad <laughs> okay yeah but like if that happened to me at my work i would just leave <laughs> yeah yeah that, that's, i said that in the preview i was like if your job is how you either like <laughs> married people get priority or you're sh- getting shipped off to siberia i'd be like i'll just quit <laughs> like yeah but also i think my agency would just ship us both and be like, oh, you're married. Just go start a new life in you, Alaska, you, <laughs> which might happen in the movie. I mean, in the show. So I don't know. Yeah. So I even like confirmed that they're staying in Japan. Yeah. It's just married so, people get priority, which, yeah. I don't know how, but, and then he didn't, his reason for not wanting to move to Alaska was kind of weird. Cause he's like, I want to be able to bring my cat. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, you can bring your cat probably. Yeah. What's so, wrong with your cat that you can't bring a cat with? But yeah, Rika's obviously the star of the show. She's so amazing. And I love the the throwback of like sh- showing why she loves maps so much. And I think we'll get his backstory eventually of like why he actually moved from his family. But I've been really enjoying the show. The The moment where she gave him the frog stone, oh. I was like, oh, I was like, this, this is not going past like a seven. This Absolutely is going way up. So much romance. I couldn't. But yeah, I, I've been really enjoying It's really cute. It's really like... I don't know. They're so quirky and fun, but Rika's obviously the star of the show. And I'm really looking forward to see where it's going. I didn't expect there to be a threat, though. Yeah. And I don't know if it's like a serious threat or just someone playing a prank. So 
I don't know. I'm curious where it's going to go from here. Yeah, the threat is a little too diabolic right now. Like, it seems like, like you, like, I know what you did last summer. Like, pick up the phone or I'll kill you. And I was like, yo, we're just, f- like, why do you care so much? It's a job. So somebody's got, like, a personal vendetta. I don't, like, ex, like, crazy ex boyfriend vibes, but. It does to me seem a little unnecessary. I feel like you could have the drama of trying to figure out their relationship be the focal point of the drama and then just go from there. I don't think you need to have a possible serial killer calling you to like add the drama. So like outside of that, man, actually now that we talk about it, like there's some things I don't like it that I really didn't think about as much. <laughs> like, like what? Well, like, like the serial killer on the phone. Like, I, I, I just think that's very unnecessary, but I'm going to let it cook. I'm going to see how this goes, but I have a feeling like it could be handled poorly. So I would like to see it be at least a logical reason and not just be like, I, I wanted her and you took her from me and now I'm going to double sabotage your $40,000 a year job. It's like, all right. All right, guy, relax. But but the fun outweighs the con. So um, yeah. I have the show at an eight. I could see it being a little bit lower. I don't. I can't see it being higher than an eight, really. Like unless unless Austin Powers has like the character development of a lifetime, he really does hinder the show for me. Like I I just wish he had some level of riz, some backbone, something that like separates him from being like an adult version of the bland bitch protagonist like in like harems where it's just like why do the girls like this guy and it's like that's what he reminds me of a little bit but just in a different setting because like and i don't think any girl likes this guy but um I, I need i need more from him for me to raise my score how about you yeah he's a little boring i mean sure it's cute he has a pet but like what else yeah. so but maybe like with being with his family maybe his real personality will pop up i don't know um, it, i did re- just remember that rika did get like a weird text or phone call in an earlier episode and she's like she she refused to respond or like i just remember that scene for some reason i'm like she was on like, a... vacation by herself or something like that and then yeah. and then i think it was like a dude she went on a date with was like still texting her but she doesn't want to like ghost him that, that, yeah. that's what i took away from her where like she's like oh we should just, you know like when somebody says like oh we should just be friends it's like i don't actually yeah. want to be friends i'm just trying to be nice and he's like oh well she said she wanted to be friends so i'm gonna text her all the time and it's like yeah. no dude get the hint get the yeah hint. So now i'm wondering like is he is he the person i don't know i feel like that's what well, they're allu- alluring to for sure yeah so anyways depending on how it goes it's definitely gonna be low low seven i don't see it going past a low seven um but yeah eight's probably the ceiling i just it's, it depends on him yeah if he for some reason gets like an incredible riz and <laughs> sweeps me off my feet it'll be a nine but i think an eight's a fair fair he prediction needs, he right needs now. a haircut and then they need a <laughs> beach episode and then he's like actually like jacked and it's like oh oh no he's hot oh no <laughs> can be a nerd he just needs to have some sort of riz to yeah. be like you know, yeah that's fine yeah stop your- she's doing all the work right now oh, for so. sure 100 <laughs> percent. okay so that is 365 days to the wedding we are done with the romance even though this show kind of hinted at a little bit i think it actually has the romance tag but i don't think it will ever go that route and that's you are miss servant a show that i had no intention of watching at all I, I saw the premise uh, or I saw like the the photo. I was like, this is whatever. I've seen a hundred made shows before. And then it started getting some buzz in our discord. It's like, oh, this show is like really fun. I'm like, you know what? I'm bored. I can watch one episode and see what it's like. This show's really fun. <laughs> like I am shocked by how much fun it is. And the cat the 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 two each other are are great i really enjoyed the addition of like the little sister as sort of this wing woman slash chaotic good character 
along with the dog don't get me wrong i uh, i'm not even trying to pronounce his name but like those two additions to like their story has been a blast i didn't see yuki joining school that was uh, kind of a twist uh, but at least they allured to it that like she's not like she is older than what she is portraying which is great big fan of them establishing that but yeah there's you know there's some mystery we got like introduced to the nurse who is also an assassin like why is she here so i think there could be some fun twists going on with this but like my favorite part of this show is when they're just like eating food petting their dog uh she's like obsessed with that sauce like that's it it's a fun like family found family dynamic thing that they got going on and just like you know the sister sprinkling a little chaotic energy was like oh you should marry my brother which is like something a little sister would probably say to any pretty girl that their loser brother has or whatever so that's been great like it's been a lot of fun uh according to mal there's a couple other characters that we haven't been introduced to yet so uh the cast will be growing a little bit more but uh what's your thoughts so far on you are miss servant I think it's really cute. My first impression was that she's basically just Yor and Comey yep. as a person. Yep. Like if Yor and Comey had a kid, it would be her. I personally thought I was surprised there was no fan service. Well, until the recent app, but I was, it was nice to not have made fan service until the recent episode with the nurse. But I've been At really least she's enjoying an adult it. and stuff. But yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, the the assault was probably not the best. Yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. but i i've been really enjoying it i do like the slice of life moments more where she's like like blitzing to go get a sandwich for him i think that was really cute mm -hmm. i love the dog there's a lot of dogs this season and i'm really enjoying it it's a lot darker than i thought it would be there's a lot of flashbacks about her so i think we're probably gonna dive in some dark stuff about who she is and where she came from like it reminds me of like what's that movie with angelina jolie where she's like a train spy oh, in Russia? Salt? Like, oh yeah it's like that that's what I first thought about. I can't where, like, maybe I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> but it reminded me of that. Or like maybe she was like trained assassin when she was a kid. And now she's brainwashed. And for some reason, she went to his house. And for some reason, he lives on his own away from his mom, which is weird. But whatever. Um, but yeah, I did find it weird that she went to school with him because she seems a lot more older. To but I understand the reason why she wants to go to school is to like meet some people, get mm -hmm. some. I don't know. Talk to uh, yeah. people. I don't know how much older. I, I picture she's like 1920 in my head. I don't know how yeah. old she actually is, but she's. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm enjoying it. Um, the OP, like the art style, I think is one of one of my favorite visually. It's really I think good. It's really, it's really cool. Even the ED as well. So I'm enjoying it. It's not like my top favorite of the season, but I think it's just a nice watch. Yeah, it, it it's one of these shows where I tune in and I'm having fun like 97% of the time. Like I think the fat dog that they got is such a great addition. Like I'm a huge <laughs> fan of just like big fat dogs. And that is a big fat dog. I just want to like, I saw I mean, they do it all the time. They just like play with his face. I'm like, that's what I would do if I saw. Yeah, exactly. You got Marnie in front of you. You could just like, like that's what I want to do to the dog. <laughs> I'm I'm so jealous of it, but yeah, you said that before, like a little bit of the background with Yuki, we got like hints that she, at one point she had like a loving family and then didn't, I think something along those lines, why she showed up. I think that the main character, like his dad must be involved in something sketchy. Yeah. Like, I think that makes <laughs> lo logically, that would make sense of why she showed up to like his place. I wonder if they got like the message wrong and she was actually supposed to like kill him or something and then they got lost in translation or something along those lines. That'd be fun. But the show the show's been really good. Um right now it's sitting at an eight. I can see it probably dropping to a seven, but I I, I think it was it's probably gonna say that seven to eight range for the rest of the mm -hmm. season. How about you? I think so like seven point five. So I think it's it's really fun. Seven seven point five or eight point five. Let's change it up. Cool. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> The next show, I I've been looking forward to talking with this show about the show since I watched the newest episode yesterday, it's and funny. that and that is Trillion Game, and I have to say this is the worst written anime I have ever watched. It is so bad. It makes logically it makes no sense. Like the the main character is this absolute Riz Lord, even though he looks he's like the ugliest man I've ever seen in my entire life. 
And that's to say his partner, who is this giant nerd looking Pete looking ass, is also on the team. And they, they have this whole ordeal of them starting up this business and this company and becoming trillionaires, essentially. And in the newest episode, they had this hacking competition where he somehow becomes like an equipment guy setting up the whole event and he like cheats. He has, he like fucks up the, have you seen the newest episode? So how he yeah. like fucks up the Wi-Fi by like spreading like aluminum. I'm like that. I don't know if that's a thing, but like if you're at this world event hacking, a hackathon, if you think people are on fucking public Wi-Fi, you gotta be smoking crack. Like, there's no chance the biggest and also if you have the best hackers in the world, they would find a new connection in like a millisecond. Like the writing in this story is so bad. And it's like if they win the competition, they get this one of them gets to sleep with the girl instead of like taking the money. I'm like, what is going on? Like it is so poorly read. But this is one of the most fun shows I have ever watched. Like <laughs> When people say like they animate a show, like they're like, this is so anime. This is so anime times 12. Like it is so, or in every aspect, like the hacking thing, he somehow got a hundred people to help him hack in like the, the preliminary tournaments. Uh, he, he quits his job and becomes a, uh, and like recruits the other nerdy dude while he's like window washing. Uh, he's got all this money to do all these different things. He's like a huge playboy. He's doing all like it's like uh, eighty thousand things are happening at once. It's just like fuck it, who cares at this point? This reminds me of our my no our Mar Nokotan conversation with Miles, where it's like if you have negative like if you don't have no world building at all in your show, make it negative world building. Like keep making the show worse as you go, but in a fun way where like Nokotan wasn't funny. <laughs> this show is unironically and unintentionally hilarious it is a two out of ten in terms of writing and like a nine out of ten in enjoyment but like i would never recommend this show to like any person it's crazy it's like madhouse it's it's somebody the guy who did but it makes sense because like so the guy who wrote this did dr stone and while i have my qualms with dr stone i think the show is v insanely fun this is the same thing I have my qualms with the show. It is so fun. I don't know what the author does, but he makes his makes his series just an absolute treat to watch. Cosette, what are your thoughts on Trillion Game? You know what? I have a fun time just seeing what the hell Haru's going to do every week because mm -hmm. it's in wild. And you know what? The first episode tells you how the show is going to be. 100%. Like, it's just like it's WTF. Like this is how it's going to be. Sure. Is this realistic? Probably not. But this is what it's going to be like. And it's such a fun time. And uh, it's kind of like a tech thriller in some ways. It reminds me of like, it gives me like heist vibes, like Ocean's Eleven, yep. hackers. Like they're just like doing shit. And like, is it realistic? Probably not. But it's just so much fun. And I really like the dynamic between Haru and, or I forgot the other guy's name. Monobu. But they have a really, Monobu, okay, cool. They have a really cool dynamic because he's got Riz and Street Smarts. And he's got book smarts. And that's like the best combo for any company because you've got the shy, smart person and you've got the person that will do anything to get it done. And I think that's such a good combo for uh, for a startup company. So I think it's a really fun time. My qualm is that the female looks exactly like him. Oh, yeah. And it looks, and it looks like a game of like, there's a game called Siblings Are Dating. <gasps> so if you put them side by side, they look a little <laughs> Uh, sorry but it, it, it's so much fun and i think the recent episode was just like a great time and the way that they were able to figure out how to like switch the wi-fi with the that's just so brilliant and i <laughs> would it ever happen in real life probably not yeah. but like it made me think i could actually do that in real life that, um, that's funny you're like this that was brilliant i'm like this is the dumbest fucking shit i've ever seen <laughs> <laughs> i'm so gullible because i'm like that could actually happen right like i could do that yeah as uh, if like as soon as he started doing that if he would be kicked out like immediately like they're at this isn't like like a school club <laughs> hacking event they're at like the world championship of hacking which is being held in a mall <laughs> like 
I don't know, there's like a scene where like Madabu's like getting all these points and the people on like the terrace are just like, yeah, yeah, let's go, Madabu. It's just like, why are these people just like at a mall cheering? For, it's just like, it doesn't matter. Like it legit it, doesn't matter. It's esports for hackers. Like it's just. <laughs> esports. I, 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 I guess I've seen like hacking competitions on like YouTube before and they're like. They're in like legit event spaces and like all their computers are like hardline and wired and they have all this stuff. And this is just like, it feels to me like they set up a couple tables and added a router. It's like, here you go, world championships. Let's go. It's like, all right. So, but I guess like getting to the, the, the end of this conversation for chilling game, I think the ED is insane. I think it's so good. I think the ED. One of my favorite yeah. EDs, but I think this show generally sucks and I have it at a stick. So like that many shows I say are like terrible and I have them at a stick. And this is one <laughs> of them. But it, it, if you're looking for something like, I don't know if you do drugs, maybe check out Trillion Game. Like, I feel like this would be a really fun show to watch high. Like, I don't know. It's nuts. What are your uh, final thoughts on this one? Wow, I might actually disagree with you. No, I'm kidding. Um, I think it's <gasps> oh, sure. Dang. It might go six. If it starts to lose its appeal, like if I start to get sick of Haru being Haru, sure, I might give it a 6.5. But I think it could be an eight, honestly, because I'm having a like if every episode's like episode four, I might enjoy it. I saw some complaints of people saying they didn't like the fact that they actually revealed that they actually became like a very successful company because there was like flash forwards. So we saw like how they're well. We saw how Manabu's doing. <laughs> Do people that see the title of the show, like I feel like that's very. I thought it was like very clear that the the story is about how they became trillionaires, not yeah. what they're doing now. Yeah, yeah. I saw reviews with that. I'm like, but it's a fun. Like it's it's fun. I don't know. I enjoy it. So I'm having a fun time. We'll see. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> it's two cores. Like that's my thing. This was one core. It's two- yeah, it's two cores, yeah. Oh. If this well, is like a 12 episode thing, I feel like I could sort of just like, oh, that was a fun one core show, but like this for two cores consecutively might be an issue. Yeah, I it'll <laughs> uh, have to really interest me to go past 12. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see next season, I guess. We'll we'll find out during when we're reviewing Orb if we're also reviewing Trillion game. <laughs> Yeah, damn. Orb versus Trillion game. Who's going to come at the top? Yeah, I have a a feeling, but you never know. I've been wrong before. Uh, So that's Trillion game. Uh, Before we get to our final show, we're going to go through like sequels and other shows that we're watching. Cosette, do you want to go first or do you want me to go first? I can go. All right, take it away. You can do this. I'm watching a lot, so I'm going to speed through some. (laughs) Um, The first one, uh, I'm going to say like my top favorites first. So the first one is Suma Show. Suma Show, I think it's the way it's pronounced, but it's basically the show about his wife reincarnating as an elementary school student. And I know if anyone's hearing this title, they're like, oh my God, why are you watching that? But the premise is not actually like pervy. It's actually a very heartwarming and heartbreaking story. Um, and thanks to like people on Twitter who like actually clarify what the story is about, because I, I might not have checked this out until I saw someone talk about it on Twitter, but it's such a nice heartwarming story. And it's a story about overcoming grief. And if anyone doesn't know, it's basically like his wife passes away. And so they go through some grief and then she reincarnates as she reincarnates as a baby first, obviously. And then as she goes through life, for some reason, she remembers her past memories. And so she awakens and then somehow she's like not neighbors, but she's in the same neighborhood as her old family. And she doesn't approach them right away. She kind of like sees them and checks in how they're doing. And she sees that they're not doing well, like the father and the daughter are not doing well. So one day she decides to just be like, hey, guess who's back, baby? <laughs> so <laughs> wife. Uh, it's just funny, um, but it's, it's really nice. The first two episodes really broke me, but it's not because of the family reunion. It's about stuff that she's dealing with. I will do a trigger warning if abuse is not your thing. There is a bit of abuse, family abuse in this show, but it looks like it might be remedied in a few episodes, but I'm not really sure how I feel about that with that, that with it being remedied so quickly, but I'm really enjoying it. I think it's really sweet. And there's also a side love story that might be blooming. So um, really enjoying it. The husband is not pervy at all. He's just very endearing with his wife and he's very careful 
with like what he says in public and she puts a halt to him anytime he's like trying to get too close and she's like no i am a I little can. kid <laughs> yeah so um sumo show is great my other favorite is negative positive angler which is like the fishing slice of life drama show that's out and it's another show about grief <laughs> grief and like about a guy who's like down in his luck he's like um, he's in school, but he's in a large amount of debt. He has a gambling problem. So, and he ends up homeless. And at the end of, he finds out he is diagnosed with cancer. Um, so he's really, really, really down out of luck. He is in a very negative mindset. And then he meets like these people fishing and that he, they basically develop like this friendship. And it's such a nice found family story. And like, I love found family shows. So this is probably gonna be my favorite of the season. It's really, really sweet. I love the characters. There's a guy named Takaki who's like, not even just best boy, he's best man. He like takes care of the main character so much. And I'm really enjoying the show. I think it's it's a great story about trying to like turn over a life from going from a negative point of view to a positive point of view. So yeah, I'm really enjoying it. I recommend it. I'm not saying too much because I want Pete to watch it. So Oh, there's a lot <laughs> of things that I don't want to watch. I know, I know. <laughs> It's fine. I'm sure I it's great. That. It's just those are you said some words. I was like, yeah, I'm immediately out of yeah, that one. I know it, it's a tough one, but I love slice of life, and it's definitely going to be a heart wrencher this season. But I'm really enjoying it. For a fun one, Rama half or Rama one half. Mm -hmm. It's the remake, I guess. But I never watched the old one. Um, but it's such a fun premise. I, I know a lot of people have praised the old version and the manga, so I was really excited to watch it. I think it's Mappa that's doing it, it but is, yeah. Uh, yeah, so they've been doing a really great job. I think the art direction has been really cool because they like during like battle scenes, they like change the color palette and it's a really interesting anime to watch because even though it's like a rom-com, there's like some really fun scenes to watch of them animated, but it's, it's just a really fun show and it's a really fun rom-com. Uh, if anyone doesn't know, it's because the boy's cursed, so he turns into a woman when he's in cold water and then he turns back to a male when he's in hot water. One of those shows. It has an etchy tag, but honestly, not. There's some boobage, but it's nothing. So I'm really enjoying it. It's a lot of fun. Not my top favorite, but it's enjoyable this season. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> There's a lot of shows. Uh, Kino Koinu, which I know you're watching. Wait, Kino Kinoku? Kin Kino Koinu. Yeah. Mushroom Pop. That's easier to say. This premiere broke me. <laughs> Uh, it's really hard, and my dogs are in front of me. Yeah. Uh, it was a really hard episode to watch because I dealt with pet grief and pet loss less than five years ago, so uh, it was really hard. But it was a really sweet slice of life, and it really shows like how toddler-like dogs are and how yeah, they always Marty. get <laughs> and how they get into trouble. But it's such a fun and sweet show. I guess it has the Ishiki tag, so it does have that like calming slice of life. For sure back to it so it's really nice to watch and i watch it with marnie but she falls asleep watching it so l luckily the sad parts are probably gone now but that first episode really hit me really hard i i'll, I'll definitely admit so um but i'm really enjoying it um oh i didn't even say my ratings should i say my ratings uh i mean if you want sumo show probably an eight negative positive anger i think i'm gonna give it a 10 oh, i'm yeah. predicting rama half probably eight nine Mushroom Pup, I think an 8. 7.58. But yeah, I've been really enjoying uh, Mushroom Pup. Acro Trip. That's a fun time. Okay, I, I, if you're going to say something bad about this show, I'll be like, we are done. <laughs> what? People don't like this show and I don't get it. Oh, I mean. <sighs> I think this show is I, hilarious. I think it is I so think funny. I mean, comedy is subjective, and like usually, I'm the one that's like, "Oh yeah, I'm not into it," because most comedy shows don't hit me that hard. But this is—it's a fun time, and I think it's fun because it has that magical girl villain storyline. But it's different because this girl is joining the villain because she wants to see the magical girl in action because she's so in, not in love with her, but admires her so much. Um, I said it's like PG gushing over magical girls, but I've never watched that show, yeah, so I'm totally, <laughs> I'm totally assuming that that's what it is. But I'm really enjoying it's a fun time. The the Kuma Kaijins are like the best non-human thing this season. They're I just so love fun. them. They're so much fun. And it doesn't take itself too seriously seriously. Like it's just a nice show to watch on a Wednesday. Like you don't have to think too hard. It's a fun show. And I, I see like this mentor-mentee relationship kind of growing 
with the main character and the villain, which is like another kind of trope that I love a lot. Mm-hmm. So really excited to see where this goes. It's just a fun time. And I get why people might not like it, but I love it. So it's pretty going to, I think the high also go would be an eight for me. Okay. Yeah, I think it'll be an eight. Lowest would be like, if it really just gets really annoying, maybe like, seven. but really enjoying it. I got three more. Okay. This, this is going to be like really quick though. Stories of girls who couldn't be magicians. I honestly, I've started watching it because it's pretty. It's so pretty. It's so <laughs> pretty. It's so gorgeous. And that's the only reason why I'm watching it. But it's also like another magical girl show. And I love magic. Um, but it's very different as well. And I like the fact that there's like, they're learning magic kind of like organically. Yeah. Where it's like learning like the system of it and how to get to it from like the beginning. So I find that really interesting. It kind of reminded me of Witch Hat just like a tiny bit. A little bit. Yeah. It, but um but it's definitely more like which had it which no which little witch academy little academia <laughs> yeah so it's, it's not it's a lot like that i Agreed. think it's fun it's not gonna be my top favorite this season i think it's definitely like a 7 7.5 yep. kind of situation but it's really pretty so enjoying that and there's blue me bro but like i only watched one episode right now i have no opinion <laughs> right now besides the fact that the main character reminds me of tanjiro so which is a positive it. or a negative depending on who you are yeah i don't know i dropped demon slayer so oh, I, okay. just... I i mean i also dropped demon slayer so <laughs> um but but i love samurai stuff so you know what i might uh, so it could be a high eight but it's okay okay and the last one is gun gale i'm watching it it's a great time i love the fact that len and pito are hanging out and playing together but now with the last twist like Back to, oh, don't back tell to, me because no. I'm, oh. I'm an episode behind. Shit. Sorry. No, it's Anyways. It's, okay. it's, it's, it's Sword Art. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I love Sword Art. Uh, no. Um, but no, it's a fun time. There was one episode recently. Did you watch the one before? Uh, maybe I'm two behind. So they were like hiding in the trailer of the train thing and they were in the yeah, middle yeah. of a match. And then I think. Then I think the, the girl squad came in and they're going to do stuff. Okay, so you didn't see the girl with the short hair that kind of looks like a guy and the green oh, hair Oh, she girl. like ended the episode. Like, they were like, oh, it, they okay. were like, the they looked like they were like drinking behind the scenes and they were talking about some scheme. Okay, okay. Maybe so I'm the, too behind after, then. Okay, so the episode after that, perfect. Like, okay. it was freaking fantastic. Okay. It was awesome. I loved it so much. I think it ended it ended the way that I didn't think it was going to end, but it was so awesome. It was probably one of my favorite episodes of Gun Gale, actually. Awesome. Yeah. So, um, but that's it. 18 show. Well, 18 plus. Yeah. 18 shows. That might be more than me. No. Yeah. Because I dropped. I, I think I'm going to drop like two or three. So okay, I haven't dropped anything yet. So I dropped the one villainous show. But there's some other ones that are on the chopping block, so we will wait and see. Okay. Oh, and Gun Gale's like, I think it's good. Like, I gave the last season, I think, a 7. Mm. This might be a 7.58. I don't know. Okay. I really I really like the, the recent episode, so, yeah. Okay, right on. Yeah. Okay, uh, other shows that I'm watching, because I mentioned it, Arco Trip, I think the show is so funny. There, there was, like... It reminds you of two shows. It reminds me of Welcome to Demon School, Irmacoon, and the other one is Love After World Domination. And so one thing with World lo- Love After World Domination is that they never stop the conflict. Like, it's always going. And in an episode of this, they stop the conflict. And w- so what happens to the magical girl who protects the city, she becomes a community service trash picker-upper because there's no evildoer. And I thought, I was like, that's so fu- that's so good that's so good like what do you do if you're a magical girl and there's no crime you just become a civil servant so there's that and then the scene where like they got like kidnapped inside of like the kobini just said about it. It, it's so fun i laugh my ass off of this show um you mentioned also the story of the girls who can't be magicians the art is just spectacular it is so good i do wish the show was a little bit more funny but the that like main teacher that yeah. they have i i like the addition a lot of her i think she adds something that the show was missing from the previous episodes uh, i guess argo trip i have a, an eight i think it's, i think it's i think it's good enough to be an eight uh the magical girls show i have it like a this is like a seven i think it could go either way 
I think this could be somewhere in like the six to eight range, depending if the show gets a little bit more enjoyable. But I do like what I'm seeing the last couple of episodes to think it's going to get better. But I did think it kind of was like eh, to start out with. But goddamn, like the art is so good. Yeah. Um, Mushroom Pup, I'm allergic to everything. So I've never I, I, I technically have owned dogs before, but never have experienced grief. So I thought like. Oh, this is probably going to hit some people, and it did. Uh, It hit you, it hit Sora, I know. And I think that's just like a testament of like showcasing something along those lines. But I do wish the Mushroom Pup focused more on the Mushroom Pup, because I think (laughs) the main dude is kind of really boring. Yes. But like when Mushroom Pup does Mushroom Pup things, peak cinema, love it, adorable. I have it at an 8 right now. I think it's a pretty low 8. I think it's going to somewhere hover in the 7 to 8 range. And then the last show... um. I have to make this statement. I am an absolute fraud when it comes to ReZero. Like, I don't know any characters' names, really. I don't remember any storylines from season one. I remember when I was watching the first episode of season three, I'd be like, have we seen this character before? And then Johnny, who's like the biggest ReZero fan, is like, yeah, he was introduced in episode 18 of season one. I'm like, cool. I watched that seven years ago. I don't remember jack shit. Season three has been fantastic absolutely pure gas no breaks mimi is my girl i know she got fucked up in the last episode if she dies this show is trash i would never recommend re-zero to anybody but this season has been pure chaos um the 90 minute episode one was a little draggy but this is this is the oshido code it essentially where it's just like the last 10 minutes i'm like jesus fucking christ what is happening in re-zero and it's been pure gas the whole time it's been nuts this season's been great it's gonna be hard to beat sanctuary for me uh this the end of second season i thought that was beautiful um i have this at a nine i have all seasons of re-zero at a nine so i don't think this is not gonna be a nine but it, this season's been great i i thoroughly enjoy watching re-zero so those are the uh, uh i guess like i dropped the villainous show uh do over damsels on like my chopping block I'm trying to think if there's any other show. I was I was gonna w- watch Blue Samurai, but I decided probably I'm not going to. Um, just based off people's like reactions and reception to the show. I think that's all I'm watching. Let me just Uzumaki? I thought you were one of the few. So I did so I was gonna watch all four at once. I was oh, okay. and okay. then everyone's like, episode one, oh god, yeah. And then everyone's like, oh no, season episode two, oh no, episode three, oh no, episode four. And like I read Uzumaki. So like I don't think I I don't think I'm gonna watch it anymore. Like I got my I don't want I don't want the experience I had reading it be ruined by what Adult Swim did to Uzumaki. So I'm mm-hmm. probably not going to watch it, but I did read it, so I have some something going for me. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm 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 not gonna lie. I I do like this season a good amount, but like I don't know. Like it got announced like Apothecary Diaries is next month or next season. I'm like, I really just want to watch next season. Like it's Sakamoto Days and My Happy Marriage, and you yeah. you get unnamed memory. Like, I get, no. I get honey lemon soda. Like, I'm kind of looking forward to next season. But this season's been this season's been fun. So, you I, say that every seasonal review though. Was that? Let's be honest. You, you're always like, oh yeah, the next season looks gas. <laughs> well, okay, I, this season did look really good because I thought that I thought this season was going to be the best season of the year. And I mm. think that's on me for b- being so high on it because I. Uh, maybe it was like Dan to Dead and Uzumaki, that combo. You were like, hype. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I don't know. But like, I think spring. Yeah, I think spring was probably the best season of anime. This spring tends to be the best. Se- like last year. I, mean, I think last year's spring was the best season of anime ever. So. Yeah. yeah to beat that that was definitely her and people think i'm crazy and then you go look at what came out in spring 2023 and then you'd be like oh yeah that season was insane so yeah i mean winter this year might be in tight competition with spring yeah it's winter or spring i think for me Yeah, yeah for sure okay cool uh let's get to our last show is i'm gonna slaughter this Maji Lumineer Magical Girls Incorporated is that right okay you're based off your laugh uh, you know what you know what you say it 
Maggi Lumiere. What did I say? You said Maggi Lumiere. Oh, God. Okay. What <laughs> goes that said? Trend. Don't listen to me. Girl of back trend. <laughs> Maji Lumineer Magical Girls Incorporated. Is that right? No, don't, no, don't listen to her. <laughs> I pay you that, not her. She has no power here. Oh, okay, my bad. Uh, English is not my first language. Unfortunately, it is, though. Um, I had a lot of, a lot of hype going into this show, at least from my perspective. I love, I'm not the biggest Maho Shoujo fan. Uh, but I do love anything that has an adult cast tied to it. And I've heard really good things about the manga. And when this show launched, I thought like the transformations were stunning. I know you, uh, you when you get to it, you're going to have your complaint with it. I thought the show fell a little flat on like having fun until the newest episode. I thought the newest episode was a blast. Sort of them figuring out the, the situation with like the sewers and how they're going to solve the problem and how essentially magic is sort of engineered in this world where you can kind of solve new age problems with magic and then adapt to like the situation at hand. And it's not just like this old textbook of old spells. Like you were back in the old days. It's like revitalizing like this magical girl genre where I will admit I'm maybe not the best person to speak on for it, but to me, I'm having a lot of fun. Like, I don't watch, like, Pre-Cure. Like, that's not really, like, my style of, like, magical girls. Like, I'm more... This is also sounds very stereotypical of me. Like, I really like Madoka. <laughs> like, like that's my style. So, meeting somewhere in between with this show has just been really fun. I think the voice actress for Hitomi, the blonde girl, is just killing it. Oh, my God, I love her so much. Like, She's she's Nadeshko, which I'm a little surprised by because those are just polar opposite voice voices. So she got rage. Yeah. She's Nadeshko. Uh who else is she? That you would maybe recognize. She's I from Love is War. Uh, yeah, I mean she has some pretty big whatever, <laughs> but like she's more I and I don't know. I her rage is I, I love her as a voice actor. So this this show has been a whole lot of fun. I think it can get a little weird, like uh, like the the main boss dude wearing like his get up. Like I don't like obviously he's obsessed with magical girls, but like if he was my boss, I'd be really creeped out. But then we have like the capitalism side of the other group that's like maybe trying to buy them out, and he used to be like old business partners with the owner of their group. So I, I, I'm having a lot of fun with this show. What's what's your thoughts on? I'm not even gonna say the title because you're gonna make fun of me of the Magical Girl show. <laughs> what goes um, that? No, it's, it's so fun. Honestly, it's it's so fun to have like different. There's like three different Magical Girl shows this week, this mm -hmm. season, and they're all so different. And this one's like where like anybody could be a Magical Girl. It's just a job. I think that's really cool. Like yep. you're not just born with magic, or like a familiar doesn't approach you and be like, "Hey, you should be a Magical Girl." Like. <laughs> Like hey, you want to sell I, your soul to be a magical girl? <laughs> and I do like like the agency aspect, and that like they're making like spells and they're they're crafting the outfits and the equipment, yep. and it's all like proprietary, and they all have like books and studies, and I just think it's so cool to have like this full team powering these magical girls. The first episode, I was kind of like, oh, they have an iPad, and it controls how they're doing magic. Yep. I wasn't sure about that at first. And then as, like, the episodes went on, I think the, the recent episode, they were like, if that magic doesn't exist, we'll just make it. Yeah, and exactly. I was like, oh, shit, that's really cool. Like, I was like, this is going to be truly a game, right? Like, this is going to be the <laughs> game where they're just going to make a bunch of, like, magical that's tools. That's how they made their money. They just created magic. Yeah. So it has, like, that really fun, like, startup energy. It's so funny how, like, so many shows are, like, kind of, like, similar this season because it has that startup energy like the boss he's kind of cool he's just he just wants he's to be cool magical. i was just like i don't know it'll be for a loop a little bit <laughs> um but it's a it's a fun team and um the monsters are okay okay like they yeah, had eyeballs they are, yeah they're not like threatening but um and i do i think there's like another girl that's gonna join the team i think just looking at the visual so um it's a fun time i hate that it's on prime though because like not everyone has prime so that's the only sucky thing about it this season but i'm still really enjoying it 
Yeah, I I think enjoyable is what I would put it. Outside of that, episode four had what I was looking for a little bit more, but like the transformations were like I thought breathtaking. <laughs> but then outside of that, they really I like I thought the action was kind of boring. But like sort of what they did in the sewers in episode four, I thought they stepped it up a little bit more. And yeah. that like that was an awesome fight. But I, I it's it's hard when I like compare it to like have you seen Madoka? Yes. Okay, so the have you seen yeah. the- the season though not the movies not the movie okay well there's like a fight in madoka that's just like it's like my second favorite fight in anime it's like when i compare like that fight to like what's going on here it's like very very basic and i yeah. think that they have the opportunity to showcase like their magical skills and really make some sakuga out of those things like that's what i'm looking for in like a fancy maha shoujo thing yeah. and up until episode four i didn't get it episode four i got it so i'm happy um right now i have to show it like a high seven I think it's probably going to hover in the 7-8 range. Just, I, I don't think it's like going to be mind-blowing in any way unless they do something out of left field. But it, it's enjoyable. It's what I'm looking for, and I'm having a really good time with it. How about yourself? Uh, it's definitely like a 7, 7.5. And like, since, you, since you brought it up, the trans- transformations yep. are nice. It's just the background. As someone who studied design, it just the background is so busy. It looked like someone pasted a bunch of like textures and it's just so busy. Like the animation's already pretty enough. You don't need like all this background in it. But I'm just that's like it, that doesn't even affect my score. I just when I watch it, I was like, oh, that's kind of ugly. But like everything else in the transformations is beautiful. So I think it's definitely like a seven. I think it's lower than a seven on now, sadly. It's like a most 6. shows. Six point nine nine. Honestly, every time I really like a show, it's always lower than seven. Yeah. <laughs> so but I think it's we'll definitely like a Arco trip. Yeah. I don't know if we'll get to an eight. I really don't know. Like I, I can see Arco Trip going up there. I don't know about this one, so I'm gonna say like seven, seven point five. Yeah, I would like to see like it, what would raise it for me is like if Hitomi, the the blonde haired girl, like it, I I feel like if they got into like a their their conflict so far has been very mild. Mm. If I could see a little bit more of a high stakes like fight. In some way where it's where you get the sense of like life and death i think that could be a really good way to increase the score on this but it's kind of it's very fluffy it's very bright and fun so i don't know if it's going to go that route i also would like to see more of like the in office stuff and their shenanigans I, I think they have a cast where they can kind of do some fun office shenanigans and haven't really seen that yet, but maybe when Kana gets a little bit more comfortable within the group, we can see a little bit more of that. So, uh, yeah, solid show. I believe that wraps up anything. Do you have any parting words to your adoring fans? Watch Argo Trip. Yes. Oh my god, it's so good. Watch, watch Negative Positive Angler because that's like my favorite show of the season, actually. So I'm gonna say that. But watch Arco Trip as well. If, if it's some strange turn of events where like the main character of that show doesn't die, I will watch. Yeah. I will a million percent watch it. But the two years left to live thing is a huge turn off for me. And I, I like know. I said on our Devil May Cry Baby episode, I'm a big softy boy. Like I like fluffy things, I like nice things, and I'm sure the show is great. I just do not need that in my life at the moment, so. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. I hope other people out there enjoy the shows that they're watching. Let us know what you're watching, whether it's in our comments, uh, our Discord, wherever. Let us know what you think is going to be the best show of the season. Tell us what you're looking forward to next season, whatever. Anything AM related, let me know. Comments, Discord, wherever. I want to say thank you to Cosette for joining me as always. Uh, You're the best. You're the best. Thanks to everyone out there who has listened. If you want to support us, the best way to do so. Like, comment, subscribe, leave a review on whatever platform you're watching or listening to us on. Uh, Next week is the ever-awaited Watch Club episode of 86. Uh, So if you want to (laughs) see, you are too excited for that show. If you want to see why I don't like 86, tune in to watch it. Otherwise, in two weeks, doing something, don't know yet, I'll figure it out. There'll be an episode out in two weeks. Otherwise, I want to say thank you again, and we'll see you next time. Peace! Bye-bye!